Hey, hey, it's Shay, and you're listening to Casual Cattle Conversations, the podcast for cattle producers to explore new ideas that will help improve their overall management practices. Speaking of improving management, I want to encourage you to take a look at the lineup for the quarter two Rancher Mind events. These laid back Q&A calls are between industry experts and fellow beef producers, and quarter two is all about labor challenges. I mean, we're talking how, when, and where to find the right help, when to integrate new technology onto your operation, and how to become a more efficient manager and leader overall. If you want more information on being a part of these producer-driven conversations, head to the show notes and click the link that'll take you straight to my website. With that, let's hear what our guest has to share with us today. All right, Neil, it is great to have you on the show. I know we've been able to connect and talk previously, but not necessarily in the same format. So I'm excited to have you on the show today. And we're going to talk about spring fencing. I think spring is on the mind for so many cattle producers, especially if they're in the Midwest and they are tired of the snow and ice storms that just seem to keep coming our way. So before we kind of dive into the topic of spring fencing, would you tell the audience a little bit about where you're from and what you're doing in the agriculture industry today? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Shay. I appreciate it. I am in uh, Northeast Ohio, so Geauga, <clears throat> excuse me, Geauga County. Uh, we are in the snow belt of Ohio. Um, my wife and I have uh, ran a farm the last six years. We mostly do uh, pigs, turkeys, chicken layers. We have a few horses. Uh, I'm pushing for cattle this year, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but I've been with Gallagher almost four years now. Um, so yeah, that's how, that's the agricultural end I'm in. Um, been farming for five plus years with Gallagher, four years, visit plenty of cattle producers, had a lovely time with that and just getting everybody ready for spring. Uh, we just had a nice storm yesterday, so um, spring can't come fast enough, so well, absolutely. And yeah. um, I appreciate you being on here with you uh, traveling to all the farm shows this season. I know winter is full of those for your team. So yeah, sp spring is trade show and uh, grazing conference heaven. So we're all over the place trying to get everybody ready for spring. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, as cattle producers are thinking forward and thinking about spring, you know, oftentimes we're focused on calving. That's our big thing, right? But within all that, we need to make sure that our fences are up for when we can kick pears out, um, kick stalkers out, whatever it may be to get them grazing again. So what are some of those main items that producers need to think about as they go out and check some of their existing fences to make sure that they're going to be good to go when they turn those cows out and they're not going to have to worry about the neighbors calling and say, Hey, Joe, you got, you got one running in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Especially if uh, the producers haven't been using a pasture for a while and haven't had fencing on it or a charger on it. <clears throat> it's always good to do a, front, a fence run, uh, riding the fence line, as you would say, checking all your insulators, checking all your wire, making sure no trees or limbs fell on it during the winter months, and <clears throat> making sure, <clears throat> excuse me, making sure the fence is just in solid condition. You know, if you see any broken insulators, you see any limbs or trees down or something that came across your fence that shouldn't be there, you just, it's a good idea to just clean that whole fence line up before you set out uh, the animals. And then, you know, your grounding system, you're most likely not going to take that out of the ground, uh, but you might have a solar charger that was connected to that and you stored your solar charger. So it's a good idea to just check all the ground rods you have in the ground, make sure they're all well uh, connected with uh, 12 and a half gauge wire, make sure that's all up to par and uh, using the correct grounding system uh, and before uh, you set the animals out and get that charger out. So, so you said correct grounding system. I know mm -hmm. we've talked about different grounding systems on the show before, but where can producers go to figure out, you know, look at those different grounding systems and learn, you know, which is going to be the correct system for them and make sure that it is set up properly. 
Yeah, so our website, uh, GallagherNorthAmerica.com, is a great resource. We have some great resource uh, tools on there. We have a fence builder tool, and we also have uh, a fencing 101, uh, which we kind of call like our Bible in the fencing world. It tells you all the the neat little tricks and the proper grounding systems and everything that you should be checking for uh, on your fence. Uh, when it comes to grounding and your whole pasture, it, it's the most important um, part of the heart. So we can say that's kind of like our, uh, you know, those are our arteries pumping the blood back to our heart. Well, it's pumping all the uh, en energy for that charger. So it's a very important aspect of the charger. <laughs> Well, thank you. And I'll uh, probably have to go check that out myself, too, to make sure. Uh, well, I know I can improve my fencing, so we'll just see uh, what I can do better this year. So everybody we can improve. Yes, that is yeah. true. So we meant you mentioned, um, you know, the energizers. And so I know my family, we use a lot of like the solar powered energizers. How soon should we be? getting those out in the sun, making sure they're collecting a charge before we connect them to the fence. So, yeah, so <clears throat> solar energizers, once you buy them new, the batteries um, do not come connected. So you want to connect the batteries if you buy a new one, uh, connect the batteries and just leave it in the sun um, for up to five days. Uh, I'll use those full five days. So I'll make sure I plan ahead. Um, of putting anything in the pasture and I'll use a full five day sun um, to charge that, batter, that battery in the solar unit. That way, if you have a full charge, you're, uh, you're gonna go, our chargers, Gallagher energizers are gonna go three weeks without any sun. So a full charge is um, most important. If you did the proper procedures of storing your solar energizer in the winter by disconnecting the battery, uh, then you'll want to reconnect it and put it in the sun for another, I would say three to five days. So make sure you plan ahead um, before you put the any cattle out into the pasture and it's a solar charger, plan ahead because you're gonna have to have that battery recharged again for another three or five days. Um, proper storage uh, for winter, just disconnect the battery and put it in a, you know, your, your garage or your barn. Uh, you don't wanna leave that battery connected through the winter, but if you did, it should be okay. Um, and just put it back out in the sun for three to five days before you use it. So always plan ahead. Well, great. So as we, kind of shift gears a little bit. And I want to touch base on those producers who maybe want to start implementing some more rotational grazing and putting in some cross fences in maybe some of their already permanently fenced pastures and just break those up a little bit. What considerations do they need to make this spring as they go about putting in those cross fences? Well, cross fences can be, um, can be constructed with a piece of turbo wire and some posts and a, a reel. Um, basically, you're just gonna go uh, cross fence with a long line, uh, depending on how long of your line is, uh, with some posts and a reel. Uh, our reels have uh, little handles uh, that will clip onto your um, perimeter fence. And then you'll take uh, red alligator clips, connect that line to your already existing perimeter fence and you have one hot line. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of the go-to move. Uh, we do make some other uh, utility items. Uh, we do have called the smart fence. So the smart fence is 328 feet long uh, and it rolls up into one compartment with 10 posts. Uh, it's, so it's already existing with four lines. Uh, so if you have a run of 300 feet, you could just basically tie it to one end of the perimeter fence and stretch it out to the other. And you already have a four strand fence, easy, as, easy peasy, right? And just connect the alligator clips and you're off and running. Um, <clears throat> if you have longer runs and you don't wanna use as many posts, we have a item called the tumble wheel. Uh, basically it's a, kind of a octagon shape with um, stainless steel posts that just kind of roll like a tumble wheel. So you can move your fence um, very easily with a number of 
tumble wheel set up on a turbo wire or turbo braid um, line. Well, thank you for going into the for going into detail and talking about yeah. some of those specific products. I will link those in the show notes so that people listening can go back and you know pull up on the website what those look like so that they get a little bit more of a visual. Yeah, so yeah. The, the visual on those two items are very important. Uh, um, you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't even know what that looks like. So uh, Gallagher has a very good resource on YouTube. Uh, so we have some smart fence and tumble wheel resources that you can check out and see how those work. Well, awesome. So, you know, that's the cross fencing side of it. But what about people putting up offsets? What do they really need to focus on when they're, you know, maybe checking pastures that already had existing offsets on them, or they want to put on a single hot wire and they already had a three strand barb. What do, what considerations need to be going through their mind as they're getting ready to fence this spring? Yeah, that's a good question. So <clears throat> the offsets, de- uh, depending on what cattle that you have in there or what animal uh, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate height off the ground. So I would say around 34 inches off the ground is probably a good set. Um, if you're running maybe cattle and goats, maybe a little bit ha- higher up if you're just running cattle. Um, making sure that um, it's anywhere from five inches off of the wood posts. Uh, and if you already have existing offsets, just going around and checking, making sure they're not broken. Uh, I know a lot of some some offsets, people use nails or screws to put them in. Make sure that that insulator is not cracked where the wire can touch that nail or screw. Uh, We do make a very nice um, ring top offset. So it's a uh, it's a, you know, ring top based compressed um, fiberglass compressed uh, offset that there's no metal running through it. So no matter how much the wire Uh, rubs in there it's never going to ground itself out and if you have uh, the ability always use high tensile 12 and a half gauge wire and that offset and just make sure that all the offsets are in the posts or on your existing post properly and that the wire can't fall off and hit that metal post or any nails because that's going to short out that offset and then you're not going to have any offsets so yeah Now you said to make sure you're always using the high tensile wire. Why is that? Um, So the wire, so the high tensile will help absorb any cattle that rub that might want to rub up on the fence. Um, And it will last a lot longer. Um, So if you're going to put up your perimeter fence, like woven wire, um, that's going to last a proper fence can last anywhere from 15 to 25 years. Uh, if you want that <clears throat> offset line to last just as long, then I would suggest using stainless 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire. If it's something uh, temporary, you can always put up turbo braid or turbo wire and that will work, but that's more of a temporary <clears throat> fix as well. Well, awesome. So Neil, as we kind of wrap up the conversation today, is there are there any new tools that you're excited about in the fencing space or, I mean, anything, any final thoughts that you want to share with the listeners today? Yeah. I mean, um, I was just in a conference uh, listening to a bunch of um, cattle producers and, you know, seeing all the new things and them talking about red clover as a popular um, type of grass for the fields. So there's always, I think, innovative and new ideas. Uh, I'm very excited about our power reel uh, that we'll be releasing later this year. So it's a battery powered reel. So now you don't have to sit there and reel, it'll just be battery powered. So I'm excited about that. Um, But yeah, I think we come out with new tools all the time and to make life easier. And I think that's what it's all about. Farming's a hard job and farmers know it's a hard job. I think as being in the agricultural space and a Gallagher representative, we have the people that want to make that life a little bit easier. So, uh, yeah, I would look for new tools. Um, I'm excited about that power wheel. I think that'll make life a little bit easier. 
Well, awesome. Well, thank you again for being on the show today. I really appreciate you sharing your insight and knowledge of fencing for those of us who are trying to think spring and uh, yeah. want to make sure uh, all those cattle stay in the summer. Yeah, thanks, Shay. I appreciate you having me and just be positive. Spring's coming soon. So, And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.